I have a question. Can you explain music theory using math? Can you explain music theory using one math equation? The answer is sort of. I'll show you. Hi, I'm Joe. I compose music sometimes. People often ask me, I like how this song sounds. Why do I like this song? I answer these questions using functional harmony analysis. There are thousands of chords, but only three functions. This means you can have songs with very different chords that are functionally identical. Ultimately, these songs share a similar analysis. This is great and all, but it leads to a question. What do you do when you do not know a chord's function? In this video, I'll show you a really cool equation that lets you find many chords functions by using characteristics of the 12 notes and how much these notes love the number 3. Let's start at the beginning. I need to find chords with functions I don't know. It was then I stumbled across Latch by Disclosure featuring Sam Smith. Disclosure did an interesting breakdown video of their song, and two quotes caught my interest. If no one's got the chords right, this must be very difficult to transcribe, and I enjoy a challenge. These chords were also not made using the music math symmetry abomination I'm about to teach you. They were made using intuition. I like this because it sounds good. And I'm always trying to figure out how and why things sound good. For this video, Latch is our case study. We'll first look at why functional harmony analysis does not work on this chord progression. Then, we'll look at things from a different angle and achieve victory. Let's do this! In order to appreciate this video, you'll need to know some music theory. If you have some background on these listed topics and want a refresher, I have a short series in the description for you. Otherwise, I will continue with these listed topics at a more comfortable pace. If you already know this and want to skip to the math, head to the timestamp below. Our most important chords are triads. They're important because we know their musical functions. We'll call triads nice chords with a capital N because they play nice. Triads are consonant three note chords. There are four types of triads, but we'll focus on major and minor for now. We'll arrange these chords into a major scale, the most common series of ascending pitches. When triads are arranged in a major scale, we call them diatonic chords, and refer to the individual chords based on their degree. For example, 1, 4, and 5 are major diatonic triads, 2, 3, and 6 are minor diatonic triads. Let's learn more about functions. The three functions are tonic, predominant, and dominant. Arranging the functions in this order creates a strong cycle called a progression. We can also go backwards, or start away from tonic. The most important thing to grasp is the symmetric relationship between the three functions. It's kind of like rock, paper, scissors. Now, let's assign these three functions to our diatonic chords. One is our home, so it has tonic function. Four and five are predominant and dominant respectively. Take a listen to the strong cycle progression. Six is a minor home, it has tonic function. Two and three are predominant and dominant respectively. Take a listen. Let's take a closer look now. Why do one and six share the same function? If we build the scales on both one and six, we will find one is a major scale and six is a minor scale. These are the two most useful orders of the scale. This commonality between one and six is called a relative relationship. All relative chords share the same function. This relative relationship holds true for two and four, and three and five. Additionally, you can change chords from major to minor. This is called a parallel relationship. All parallel chords share the same function. One to minor one, minor two to two, minor three to three, and so on. 
Now, let's focus on our tonic 1 chord and all of its possible parallel and relative relationships. We can form a parallel relative transformation chain of 8 chords, all with the same function. This is great. There are 24 major and minor chords, 8 chords per function, and 3 functions. We are doing very complex math. Anyways, we now know the parallel relative transformation chain. Let's turn it into an equation. We can convert music to numbers using integer notation. We start with C equals 0 and assign consecutive numbers to consecutive semitones. C major is 0, 4, 7. From this point, numbers will refer to notes instead of degrees. Here are our eight tonic chords. We can find symmetry. Each of the rows translates only by three. In music words, you can transpose a chord by a minor third and retain its function. Cool, we'll make an equation. Let x be a chord belonging to the set of all triads. It has harmonic function h a placeholder for our three functions. When adding three to this chord, the harmonic function is still H. This add three symmetry is called tonal axis theory. It has a cool visual representation. First, arrange all of the numbers in a circle and color them based on their functions. Next, shuffle the numbers, but retain the pattern. The only way to preserve the pattern is if all numbers move by multiples of 3. Also, if you start with the original orientation and move every other number by 6, you get the circle of fit. <coughs> I mean the magic music clock. Let's keep things professional. Let's turn our latch chords into numbers. And see why tonal axis theory is insufficient for analysis. We have two goals. Currently, we can only analyze triads. We need to find a way to extend our rule to non-triads. Next, the more obvious one. Latch has chords ranging from 4 to 6 unique pitches. We need to analyze chords with more than 3 pitches. Let's tackle goal 1, extending functions from triads to non-triads. Let's look at the 8 tonic triads again. Instead of looking at the entire chords, we'll look at the components, the individual notes. Because of our add 3 symmetry, the notes can only be 0, 3, 6, 9, or 1, 4, 7, 10. We'll represent these sets of 4 with lowercase t, p, and d, and call them subfunctions. Here are the four tonic triads represented using subfunctions. For example, TDD could be C major, but it can also be a non triad with tonic function. This is great! We can extend the properties of functional harmony to non triads with some added considerations. Here's the TDP subfunction, responsible for augmented, suspended, shell, and cluster chords. All three subfunctions are represented in these chords. This causes some trouble. In music, there are chord inversions. We can represent them by rotating components. Most chords invert and retain their function. However, inverting an augmented chord only results in another augmented chord with a different function. This makes musical sense. Augmented chords have built-in ambiguity. And these chords are often used in dreamlike sequences because of their functionally malleable properties. All of this means order matters. There are 27 three-note subfunctions, nine of which are tonic. Why these nine in particular? I don't know. This is left as an exercise for the viewer. Jokes aside, it is strange that DDD is a tonic chord. This is responsible for the diminished chord. There's a musically sound reason for DDD. Tonic diminished chords are one note away from tonic major chords, specifically the important root note. This gives diminished chords built-in askewness. They're often used in dramatic situations. The most important thing to gain from this is we took 12 notes, sorted them into three sets of four, and extended functions to non-triads. Now, 
let's tackle goal two, extending functions from three note chords to four or more note chords. I have withheld some information. There are other chords besides triads which have functions. They are called extended chords. For example, the C minor 9. Well, it's good that we know the C minor 9 is tonic, and we extend subfunction properties to extended chords. Thankfully, there is a way. Let's look at the chord in context. We can clearly hear C as the most important note, and there's a way to account for the other notes. We can sort of use concatenation. C minor 9 is a combination of two triads, C minor and G minor. These are tonic and dominant chords, so we can symbolize this as tonic concatenated with dominant equals tonic. Extending this to the other chords gives us a very nice symmetric table. In fact, this table is the same one as rock, paper, scissors. While concatenation is useful, it only works on three to six note chords. If we do a seven note chord, look what happens. The associative property is lost. This means the function can change depending on the voicing of the seven note chord, similar to the earlier augmented subfunction. Thankfully, there are no seven note chords in latch, so we can analyze it. Let's append tonal axis theory with these new observations. We aren't limited to nice chords anymore. We can use all 12 notes thanks to subfunctions. Our concatenation operation allows us to use chords between three to six unique notes. Finally, subfunctions allow us to break out our add three rule into individual components, giving us our final equation. Let's use this equation to determine the functions of latch. First, we'll transpose the song from F minor to C minor. This makes zero our tonic for consistency. Next, we'll evenly break apart the chords into triples. Now we'll substitute the triples with subfunctions. From here, we can find the functions of the triples. Our final step is to concatenate into the original chords again and solve the puzzle. And that's it. We know how Latch works now. Instead of starting at home, like most songs, Latch's home tonic chord is in the middle of the phrase. The song's journey starts away from home. There are two dominant chords next to each other at the end of the phrase. This builds tension for the listener, but it does not release in a typical way. Because the chords use weak motion throughout the entire song, the release from chord to chord is felt only slightly. This is great for dance songs, as opposed to the dramatic releases of strong motion. Finally, half of these chord voicings use augmented type subfunctions. These subfunctions are very ambiguous, and give the chord their mysterious qualities. Now that we successfully analyze latch, I have one more question. So what? This equation, the proposition of functional harmony, is a refreshing way to look at music analysis. It extends the tonal axis theory system in multiple ways. First, by accounting for non-triads with subfunctions. Next, by extending the properties to, well, extensions. This flexibility of chords in theory means the system is flexible in practice. Electronic, pop, game, rock, classical. This equation gives insight into many genres. It's also helpful for composers. If someone likes Latch and wants to make a similar song, this person can take the functions of Latch and substitute with different chords to get a new song with the same feeling of the original. Finally, this also answers the question of the video. I like this song. Why does it sound good? There are many musicians who do not know or care about music theory. And these musicians make really interesting and compelling music. It's the goal of the theorist to figure out how and why this music is so compelling. This equation latches music and math together and hopefully answers the question of why music sounds good.